Recycling is a crucial component of sustainable waste management, playing a vital role in reducing environmental impact and conserving valuable resources. It involves collecting, sorting, processing, and remanufacturing materials that would otherwise be discarded as waste. Through recycling, materials such as paper, plastic, glass, metal, and organic waste can be diverted from landfills, conserved, and transformed into new products. This process not only helps to mitigate the depletion of natural resources, but also reduces energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions associated with manufacturing from raw materials. In this video, we'll try to understand the entire recycling process from collection to remanufacturing and shed light on its significance, challenges, and innovations. The process of recycling starts with gathering things that can be recycled. This can be done in several ways, such as through curbside collection programs, drop-off sites, and business recycling services that make sorting and processing more efficient. People need to sort their recyclables, like plastics, paper, glass, and metals, from their trash that can't be recycled. The trash is then taken to a material recovery facility, MRF, which is also called a recycling plant or center. As an important part of the recycling process, it's here that recyclables are sorted, handled, and made ready for more recycling or production. The size of these buildings can range from 7,000 to 8,000 square meters, and every day they sort 400 tons of trash. In most cases, when materials arrive at an MRF, these things happen. They are taken from the pickup trucks to the facility's tipping floor, where workers or automated equipment may do a quick first check to get rid of any obvious items that can't be recycled, like big pieces of trash or dangerous materials. This process sorts trash into two groups, recyclables and non-recyclables. The non-recyclables are separated from the recyclables first, things that aren't part of the cardboard. After pre-sorting, big plastic things are taken out by hand. Most recycling facilities use both manual labor and modern sorting technologies to get rid of recyclables quickly. Optical sensors, screens, air filters, magnets, and automated conveyor belts are some of the tools that are used to sort materials by their size, weight, shape, and type. These synchro screens rotate and split things by size. Things that are smaller fall through, but things that are bigger keep going down. On the conveyor, strong magnets are used to pull ferrous metals with iron in them, like steel cans, to one side and set them apart. With the help of sensors and cameras, these gadgets can tell the difference between materials based on their shape and color. They can sort plastics by color and type of glue. Heavy things like glass and metal are separated from lighter things, like paper and plastic with air blasts. Even though technology has improved, sorting still needs a lot of human labor. Along the conveyor lines, workers remove contaminants and anything else that the automated systems might have missed by hand. Sorting helps make sure that the recyclables are of better quality. Once the materials have been separated, they are compacted or baled. Putting things like paper, plastic, cardboard, and aluminum into big blocks or bags is called baling. The materials are easier to handle, store, and move after this process. Sorted recyclables are kept in bales in the MRFF until they are ready to be sent to makers to be processed further. Storing things correctly helps keep the quality of things that can be recycled. Some things that can't be recycled or are hard to recycle may still be in the sorted materials. These are called residues. These leftovers, which can include plastic bags, food waste, and small pieces that can't be recycled, are taken care of by MISERFs. After being picked through and baled, trash is sold as raw materials to factories and processing plants. These things will be used to make new things, which will cut down on the need for new resources. A lot of current MRFs use data, tracking, and monitoring systems to find ways to improve the sorting and processing processes, find out how efficient they are, and see how often things get contaminated. This method is based on data, which helps improve operations and recycling results after the MRF sorts them. After being collected, the materials are taken to processing plants where they are put through different types of processing. To get each type of material ready to be used again, it needs a different process. It is common to tear paper and mix it with water to make a pulp. The pulp is then cleaned and improved by getting rid of ink glue and other impurities. 
The sawdust that is left over can be used to make new paper goods. B. Plastics are sorted by type and then put through different steps. Plastic pellets are made by shredding, washing, and melting plastic. These pellets are used as raw materials in production. Fresh plastic, items made from glass, and broken glass are all broken up into little pieces called cullet. The cullet is melted down to make new glass items. This uses less energy and raw materials than starting from scratch to make glass. Metals D. It is possible to melt metals like steel and aluminum to make bars or sheets. Metal that has been recycled can be used to make many things, from cans to car parts. Materials that have been processed are sent to manufacturers who use them to make new goods. When recycled materials are used in production, fewer new resources are needed. This saves energy and lowers greenhouse gas emissions. Retail stores sell newly made goods to customers. By buying and using these products, you can show that products made from recycled materials are just as good and useful as products made from new materials. People who recycle support the closed loop system and encourage environmentally friendly habits. Eventually, recovered items may reach the end of their useful life. Some of the materials can now be recycled again, which keeps the circle going. For example, aluminum can be recovered over and over again without losing any of its quality. Some materials may have limits on how many times they can be recovered because they break down over time. We should ask ourselves again, can all trash be recycled? If not, how much of it isn't recycled? The truth is that some trash can't be recycled because of problems with technology, money, or the environment. 60% of the trash that ends up in a can that can be recycled is not reusable. What takes place with it? A lot of trash that can't be recycled ends up in dumps. The purpose of landfills is to keep trash in one place and reduce the damage it does to the environment. Through a combination of manual labor and advanced sorting technologies, materials are efficiently separated based on their properties. Recycling not only conserves natural resources, but also reduces energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions associated with manufacturing from raw materials. By incorporating recycled materials into the production of new products, the demand for virgin resources is minimized, contributing to a more sustainable and environmentally friendly approach. However, challenges remain, as not all waste can be recycled due to various constraints. Strategies such as waste reduction Reuse and composting play pivotal roles in minimizing the amount of waste that ends up in landfills or incineration facilities. As we navigate toward a more sustainable future, it is essential for individuals, communities, and industries to prioritize recycling and waste management practices. By embracing the principles of the circular economy and reducing our reliance on finite resources, we can work towards a cleaner, greener planet for generations to come.